Dance room. The Professional Bowlers Association Summer Tour on ESPN is being brought to you by True Value Hardware. For quality, selection, and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste, this Bud's for you. And by Columbia 300. Welcome to beautiful Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma for tonight's championship round finals of the $150,000 Hammer Open. Now let's meet tonight's finalists. Making his 101st appearance on national television, it's the TBA's all-time leading money winner, Mark Ross. His opponent in the opening match is 26-year-old Amleto Monticelli of Venezuela. Qualifying in the middle of the pack is three-time PBA champion David Ozio. Starting from the number two position is this summer's Seattle Open champion, Tom Kreitz. While Del Warren of Lake Worth, Florida is making his first ever appearance from the top seed position, he'll need to win just one game for his third career PBA championship and $27,000 in first place prize money. Hi, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, and welcome to Edmond, Oklahoma. And sports enthusiasts over the next 12 months will be focusing their attention in this region of the country. In just a couple of weeks, the prestigious PGA Championship will be played at the marvelous Oak Tree Country Club. And, of course, this coming spring, the Division I NCAA Golf Championships will also be hosted here in Edmond. Then next March in 89, right in this very bowling center, it'll be the BPAA U.S. Open. And then, of course, next summer, all sorts of fans will be flocking to watch the U.S. Olympic Festival, which will be hosted once again in Edmond, Oklahoma. But this week, Mike Durbin, bowling enthusiasts had a, a heck of a time watching the action, a tremendous field, a great finals for tonight, being topped off by Mr. Mark Roth. Well, Mark Roth making his first appearance on our ESPN telecast this summer. And if you remember, the last time he was on, he shot 299 and won that tournament. we we'll see some of the stats, or we will in just a second here, of Mark Roth. He's won more money than all of our other contestants tonight. He's got three times as many championships. About the only thing this guy hasn't done is win the Tournament of Champions, and he says that's his goal. Well, they may not be murderers row at this stage, but I'm Leto Monticelli, David Ozio, and Tom Kreitz are right up the ladder. They certainly are. He's got his work cut out for him. And Leto is making his third appearance on our ESPN telecast this summer. Tom Kreitz won just a few weeks ago in Seattle. David Ozio, the stylist, has been in a bit of a slump, but he's found it, broken out of it this week, and he could win. All right, now what about the top seed? Never bowled from that position before. Del Warren, will he be nervous, or will he be able to pull it off this evening? Del Warren's a nervous-type player altogether. He's the type of player that when he gets it going and starts throwing strikes and gets a rhythm and a momentum, he's really hard to beat. How he's going to perform from the top seed, I really don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. Plenty of cash on top of the stack this evening, so stay tuned. The opening match is coming up next between Amleto Monachi and Mark Roth, and keep in mind, Monticelli knocked off Mr. Roth in Las Vegas earlier this year. All you need to know about do-it-yourself projects is your neighborhood True Value Hardware Store. Add security and nighttime fun with this instant-on quartz floodlight, only $10.99. Accent walkways with a four-light True Guard floodlight set for just $39.99. Discourage insects with yellow bug lights from GE. Get a two-pack for $1.99. And save energy with this heavy-duty air conditioner timer from Intermatic. Just $9.99 at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Hi, if you like soft rock music like we do, you'll love Session's new album called Secret Love. It has 48 soft rock classics by the original artist. Just listen. Some people. You also get great hits by Billy Ocean, James Taylor, The Commodores, and The Moody Blues. Nights in white satin.
secret love can only be ordered through this special TV offer. Your choice of four records or three cassette tapes for only $19.95. Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-554-9000 or save COD fees by sending $19.95 for four records or three cassette tapes plus $3 shipping and handling to Secret Love, Box 50, Department E, Los Angeles, California. Welcome back, everybody, to Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma. For the opening game here, the $150,000 hammer open. Players uh, finishing up their uh, practice shots, and there you see the handshake between Amleto Monticelli and also Mark Roth. And Mark will start in the left-hand lane. New championship pair this year, Mike Durbin. Lane's 27 and 28. We moved it over. The player's telling me that lane 28 hooks a little bit more than 27. Denny, the last time these two guys played each other, match play here... And Leto won 234 to 198, and he beat him in Las Vegas earlier this year, uh, 216 to 189, as well starts with a strike. Well, last night, he bowled absolutely brilliantly in the position round game. Started with a double and had to beat Berardi, his roommate. And uh, two opens back-to-back. -back. He trailed in that match. There were five different players that had a chance for the number five slot last night. Mark threw the last six to kind of sneak in the back door. It was a, such a big match between the two of them because Berardi lost and dropped to 11th. That's how close it was. Imagine going from 5th to 11th. Oh, boy. I think 216 to 189 is not going to do it this time. I think the scores are going to be higher this game which probably put the kiss of death on it for sure, but we'll see. Well, all five players concurred just prior to the telecast this evening. The championship pair hooking a little more than the lanes did throughout the event, but the players can get inside a little bit, and it appears as if the ball's going to come back. They're throwing it right, and it's uh, definitely coming back, and the score's been high all week long. Double dribble there. It says hit him thin and watch him spin. Good thing there was no official here. There you see Rodolfo, his younger brother. I think traveling might have been called there on Monticelli, who opens up with a double. And we talked about the high scores, four 300 games this week. They watch the ball come in light in the 1-3 pocket. Watch the head pin. He barely gets it, and yet they all mix, and that whole dinner bucket falls down. And uh, somebody sneezed or something and definitely upset Mark Roth. <laughs> Roth, who never gets upset over, you know, he just doesn't even know anybody's around you. Usually you shoot off a cannon and he wouldn't care. He gave her a dirty look. It looks could kill. That lady be in trouble. They took its time falling. Look at he's looking at her again. Look at it. Well, I'll tell you what. Don't mess around with Mr. Roth once the championship round begins. Now watch the nine pin. The pin right behind the three pin here. It's there for just a second. I'll tell you. Ho oh, hum. Just another strike. Well, four shots, four X's on the board. Took an average of better than 222 to qualify for the top 24 this week. Everything going at the seventh pin, but it doesn't fall. Roth, the first of the great big hook ball bowlers. He's the one that got it all going and all started some 18 years ago. I'll never forget uh, when I worked on the PBA tour as a uh, tour broadcast director. I started in 1978. That was the year Mark Roth won eight championships in one year. And I don't know if anybody's had that kind of a year since then, nor will they. That's a lot of championships. Oh, that's I'm telling than, you. That's more than probably the rest of the field here tonight has in their career. No, that's not quite. They've got more than that. They've got 11. Well, I'm Leno Monticelli has learned how to win, Mike Durbin. That's a very big uh, thing, Denny. You have to learn how to win out here. And he had seven seconds before he finally won. Won in Japan. Had to go outside the country to get it. Came back, though, and won the uh, showboat invitational. Leto with a style that you wouldn't want to teach your son, but he sure has got a lot of athletic coordination and makes it work for him. Terrific soccer player. He grew up playing uh, soccer. This is Amleto's sixth appearance in the championship round this year. 
Earnings thus far in excess of 67,000. Last year, 112, so a little behind pace. Yeah, but there's still a lot of time left yet. Well, 27,000 on would, top this week in the Hammer Open. That'd make a help. nice dent in it, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. They climbed the ladder in a hurry. And Leto ahead by 11. He's perfect. Well, no breathing room thus far for Mr. Mark Roth because that man right there, Emleto Monticelli, is perfect through four frames. We'll be back with more strikes right after this. Born from Osborne Boat Sales in York, your local Mercruiser powered Regal dealer, inviting you to see the highest quality of runabouts and cruisers on the market today, the Mercruiser powered Regal. We have them all, big or small from the 18-foot medallion to the 36-foot Commodore. If you're going to purchase a boat this year, purchase quality, purchase Regal, and preserve your dollar investment. Come see them at Osborne Boat Sales at the Mount Zion exit of Route 30 in York. You've been part of the fun. Now be part of the Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company team. We have immediate employment opportunities with the Hotel Hershey, Hershey Lodge and Convention Center, Hershey Park, and our many other divisions. Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company has numerous positions available for people of all ages. Now hiring for part-time and seasonal openings. For additional information, call 534-3131 or stop by our employment office at 300 Park Boulevard in Hershey. Well, here's the graphic roadmap of how our five television finals got to, to the top five here. Look at Mark Ross, started 38, 32nd, barely got to the top 24 and then kind of turned on the gas. And Monticelli steady all week. Warren, once he got up near the top, he just uh, hung on to that top position all three rounds of the finals. Back to live action. Mark Roth in the fourth. Nice little clip shot there. And if you're wondering about that wrist he has, the bandage, uh, it's a little tender. He's going to go to see the doctor tomorrow when he goes home. And uh, he struggled a little bit physically here. Asking for a re-rack on lane 27. You know, he's down 21 pins, and it's early in the match, but I, he better strike right now. You know, you can't get too far behind when the guy's uh, throwing all strikes at you. Has been icing that wrist after every round, and uh, after all those years of uh, ripping that bowling ball, sooner or later something has to give, and right now he needs a double. Kind of stand pat in this match. Down on one knee almost, and that's as, uh, as excited as he'll get until he needs a big shot. Classic style of Mark Roth, way out on the lane, inside the third arrow. Now watch the six pin, second on the rack, right, snap that ten pin right out, and it's just ho-hum. Eyes, uh, take that, Monticelli. <laughs> and Leto. He's got his game face on, too, doesn't he? Oh, he does. Start to think about it, huh, Dan? Well, we talked about uh, Mark Roth's physical problems. I'm Little Monticelli. Just three weeks ago, had that thumb lanced and had to take a week off, and it's still very tender. But right now, he's got five in a row and seven more, and he can win $27,000, courtesy of folks at True Value. Or 25. I think it's 25. 25, did I say 27? I'm you've got 27 on the brain, <laughs> Mike. Let's see, 27 and 25 would be... 52. Yeah, we both got that figured out. Ooh, that'd be a night, wouldn't it? Up by 21, can make it 31. Oh, got that love tap on the 10. Asking for a little help, and he got it. Two natural talents here. Look at them. One with seven steps, the other with five. Both of them, what we call twisters. Now watch how Roth right there in that position to throw. Amleto at the top of the swing. Roth out on the lane. Amleto, they follow through, kind of comes in a little bit. Roth. And Roth says, you better keep striking, because I am. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, you know, Mark Roth has 24 300 games in his career, so he certainly knows how to go the distance. And of course, you mentioned in the Open last year in Buffalo, 
11 in a row, and they left the 10 pin, or he would have won the 25,000 in true value. And you know, earlier this year, Bob Benoit shot 300 on national television against, guess who? Mark Roth. Oh, my. Who shot 250 that game and lost. And got his brains beat out. <laughs> Another good shot. This one on the left-hand lane and the solid 10 going to stand on lane 27. Oh, he's got to be a little bitter about that shot. <laughs> he just can't afford spares when the guy's throwing all strikes at you. Five times he's captured the George Young Memorial High Average Award, and right now he currently leads the tour in average. Watch how hard and straight he throws to the 10. Man. Remember Mark made the 710 on national television in Alameda, California against Bill Straub. Boy, he has really uh, loosened up so much over the last two or three years. Uh, his whole approach to the game, I think he's trying to enjoy bowling a little bit more. Not bowling as many tournaments as he used to, but I, I think when he comes out, he's fresh, he's mentally ready and alert, and, he, and I think he, he's always loved to bowl. More time. Well, no need time. All right, now just relax. Sit back and relax now. I know you're starting to get a little nervous here, but this kid's a cool customer. See how that shoulder opens up, snaps that ball through, six pin snaps that 10 right out of there. He's looking at the 10 all the way. When Susie saw it snap out of there, yes. Uh, and the last time Amleto Monticelli shot 300 was in the Showboat Invitational in Las Vegas, where he won earlier this year. Of course, I wonder if he says yes or C. We'll have to ask. Looking for number eight. Got a little room. Uh-oh, we're still alive, Mr. Durbin. And Ralph says... Deja vu, I've seen this before. <laughs> oh, that's got to be going through Mark's mind. He's thinking, no, wait a minute. Benoit did it earlier this year. Now, Monticelli, what do I have to do to win a match? He's going to say, no, the PBA should pay him to bowl more often. We get more 300s on television. <laughs> ringing 10. What's the difference between Mark Ross ringing 10 and Amleto Monticelli's kicking it out? If I knew that, I'd still be out there bowling. <laughs> yeah, either that or you'd have bottled it and sold it, and uh, you're right, you'd be bowling now uh, or doing whatever else you wanted to do. That's the mystery of uh, the game of 10 pins, trying to knock down the number 10 pin. Well, all week long, the professionals have provided uh, tremendous, exciting bowling for the bowling fans in Oklahoma City, the Edmond area, and boy, the fans have really responded. The, they have taken this tournament to heart, and Richard Altman and his crew, uh, Tom Jenkins, and, and everybody here, uh, they've just embraced the Professional Bowlers Association. It's been a terrific week, and boy, wouldn't it be something if uh, Amleto would reward them with a little 300 game tonight? Over 1,450 AMs in the pro ham. It's been, uh, oh, brother, what a week. Ralph had everyone like that. Some fall, some don't. Mark just kind of shakes his head and says, well, I'd at this point, though, you know, Mark's thinking, hey, I'd love to see him shoot 300 and win the, win the big check. Well, the only way Mark has a chance to win this game still is if Amleto would open twice in the ninth and 10th frame and Mark would strike out. the 11th and hopefully the 12th last year you and i watched ross shoot 299 let's keep those fingers crossed and the year before we watched uh, jim harvey shoot 297 that's right in riverside oh boy there you see a nice panoramic view place is packed this evening and uh, perhaps bowling history five times it's been done before once this year once last year was 1974 the time before that jack beyond a little jim stefanich johnny gunther yep Bob Benoit and Pete McCordick. Oh, ho, ho, ho. a little shaker that time for the Venezuelan.
Quaylen and Leno Monticelli. And look at the fans out here right now. They're all starting to get to the edge of those seats and just wonder. He did kind of a grimace on his face there. He's really in deep concentration right now, Dan. Either that or deep shock. <laughs> One at a time, that's all you can do. Sometimes the 11th is the hardest. the possible score and he had us all going for a moment he did. boy he just let that one go though that was a couple of boards too wide yeah they say trust is a must but <laughs> oh what a terrific opening game for Amleto Monticelli who shoots 287 and it's been bombs away against Mark Roth I guess when you enter the PBA Hall of Fame in the first year of eligibility, uh, you're fair game <laughs> when you so. make the telecast. <laughs> Everybody wants to say, I remember when I beat Mark, right? And what a game he's had. You know, he had the seventh pin in the third frame, solid 10 in the seventh, mm -hmm. solid 10 in the eighth, and the rest all X's. Tough duty this evening for Mark Roth. Interesting the way the scoring is in Bowling Denny. And Little winds up with 10 strikes. Mark, if he takes this out, is going to wind up with nine, and yet there's going to be 40 pins difference in the score. And Mark Roth, the uh, PBA's all-time leading money winner, will move up to about $65,000 in earnings, and you're right, Mark's going to go home on the flight tomorrow morning shaking his head. And what did I do wrong last night to get beat? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> He's laughing now. What a great champion. Hey, sooner or later, you got to throw the hands up and say, it isn't going to happen. I mean, he shot 258 earlier this year and lost, and now 247. And not even close in either game. Gets beat by almost 100 pins. <laughs> Well, the fans here in Edmond, Oklahoma, appreciate Mark Roth's efforts. And uh, are the scores high? Jeez, 287 to 247. So stay tuned. Who knows what may transpire here at Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of jobs. Jobs in management, jobs in sales, jobs in almost every profession. So relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of high-paying jobs all across the country. So, relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly has articles on job interviewing, writing a better resume, and how to succeed once you get the job. So, relax. Pick up the National Business Employment Weekly at a newsstand or call 800-372-3000 and receive eight issues by first-class mail for only $35. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. Strike it rich with the PBA Summer Tour, live every Wednesday night. ESPN brings you the world's greatest bowlers as they compete in championship round action. ESPN lets the good times roll when Hall of Famer Mark Roth leads the field at the La Mode Open, Wednesday night at 9.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. All right, we're back in Edmond, Oklahoma, and let's take a look now at some of the weekly numbers. All the professionals averaging a fraction better than 213. A little discrepancy there between the lefties and the righties. Seven pins. The righties had the better of it this week. We needed 217 just to get the top 53 and 222 to make our match play portion the top 24. Seems like the high series should have been higher than 773. Walter Ray had 823 in the Pro-Am. The high games, several 300s. 27 200s in a row by Kreitz, and the most Tom Kreitz steady all week long, 38 over 200. 
And let's take a look at how uh, some of the other champions stacked up this week. Boy, Tom Baker almost making the championship round this evening. Tony Westlake with a heck of a run, shot 290 in the 41st game. And you see Joe Berardi down there in number 11th place. Both those guys are with our host here. They're sponsored by our host, Richard Altman. Brian Voss always in the finals. The great Marshall Holman there again. Warren Nelson, Tom Milton, Ken Johnson led the Pro Tour qualifier this week. And Paul Ashby in his first finals was 24th. All right, if you're looking to improve that average, then come back with us in just a couple of moments because Mike Durbin's average builders are next in line here from Edmond, Oklahoma. Like millions of Americans, would you like to own your own business? Sport It, a national dealership organization, will help you to become your own boss in the exciting sporting goods industry. You'll offer thousands of brand name sporting goods from Sport It's exclusive catalog program, and you'll work from your own home. Over 1,000 Sport It dealers nationwide. Call toll free 1 800 328 3820 for your free Sport It brochure. Or write Sport It, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55433. Sport It! As members of the American Bowling Congress, these men receive valuable benefits. In sanctioned leagues, they know their games count, and standard rules help the fun along. Awards give them proper recognition. They get their shot at national competition, and they're helping our country's Team USA. When these members go bowling, they know being organized is more fun. Get in league with America! Every week on our ESPN telecast, you hear Denny or me talking about how some bowler is playing the first arrow or the second arrow or some target out on the lane. And that's going to be the topic of our tip tonight. Targets. What do I aim at? How do I get lined up to aim for a target? Are there any rules that I should know to follow? I should start this off by saying that we didn't always have targets on the lanes to aim at. Years ago, if you wanted to pick a target out on the lane, you had to pick a dark board or you had to use the pins or an imaginary line. Then the manufacturers came to our rescue, and they put a series of seven arrows out about 15 to 18 feet on the lane, known as the range finders or the dovetails. These arrows are on specific boards for specific reasons. Here they are. The one that's furthest from the right, on your right, is the first arrow for a right-handed bowler. Likewise, the one furthest on the left is the first arrow for a left-handed bowler. They're both on the fifth board of the lane. The arrows are five boards apart. So the next arrow in is a tenth board on both sides of the lane. It's the second arrow. The next arrow in, of course, is the third arrow. It's the 15th board on both sides of the lane. And the middle arrow is the fourth arrow for both left and right-handed bowlers. And it's the 20th board. Now, when you're starting off in the sport of bowling, I recommend, if you're right-handed, that you use the second arrow from the right. If you're left-handed, the second arrow from the left. The reason for this is that it's natural and normal and easy to hit the second arrow. Plus, it gives you a little angle going into the pins. As you progress in your level of ability in the sport of bowling, you should be able to play anywhere between the first arrow all the way into the fourth arrow. But, of course, that takes practice. Now, if you think that the arrows are too far out for you to aim at, the manufacturers have helped you out to there. They put a series of ten dots on the lane, five on each side, seven feet out from the foul line. I never used the dots. I always felt they were a little bit too close, but many bowlers have quite successfully. Now, as we get back to the approach, the manufacturers have put a series of dots at the foul line, and corresponding with those dots are a series of dots at the 12-foot line and the 15-foot line. These dots, again, are on specific boards for specific reasons. The first dot, the furthest to the right, is on the 10th board. And if I followed that board out to the rangefinder, to the arrows, it's the second arrow from the right. The dots are five boards apart. So the next dot is the 15th board. Follow it out. It's the, fifth, it's the third arrow at the rangefinder. And, of course, the middle dot is the 20th board for both left and right-handed bowlers. And if I follow that board to the foul line, it corresponds to the middle dot there, to the middle arrow at the rangefinders. And if I follow it all the way down the lane, it's the head pin. Now, when you're starting off, I recommend that you use the inside edge of your left foot as a reference point and that you cover the 20th board with that and the target is going to be the second arrow from the right if you're a right-handed bowler second arrow from the left if you're a left-handed bowler that's what i'm going to aim at 
And when I use the word aim, many people get a vision of I get tense and tight and try and place that ball on the target. And that's not what I mean at all. I have a simple rule that I think you can follow that would help both low and ha a high average bowlers alike. And that rule is to always look but never aim. And what I mean by that is, as I get set up here, I'm looking at my target, which is the second arrow. I walk toward my target. I let it draw me. I swing my arm nice and free. I swing my follow through towards the target. And I watch the ball go over, over the target, hopefully. Then I look up to see if it's going toward the pins where I want it to go. In conclusion, learn your arrows. When I talk about the third arrow, learn which arrow that is. Learn your dots back here. When I say somebody's standing on the 20th board, learn what dot that is back here. It'll help your bowling. And remember, always look, but never aim. We'll see you again next week. Abletto Monticelli almost shot 300 this evening, but David Ozio has authored one this week. What might happen when they join each other? Well, let's wait and find out. Since you don't buy a refrigerator every day. I should have bought a Frigidaire. I finally got a Frigidaire. Ask for the one that lasts and lasts. I should have bought a Frigidaire. I finally got a Frigidaire. For the Frigidaire dealer nearest you, call 1-800-451-7007. I'll take the Frigidaire. Now. Frigidaire, here today, here tomorrow. You know what really burns me up? My feet. Athlete's foot kept flaring up. I get rid of it for a while, but it'd just flare up again. Finally, I went to the doctor. He told me to get Tenactin. It's what doctors and pharmacists recommend most. Tenactin even cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly like they tell you, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Fast Actin Tenactin puts athlete's foot out for good. David Ozio with some last-second instructions from our national tournament director. A little quick drink of water there. A little warm here in Edmond, Oklahoma. Mleto Monticelli starts on the left-hand lane, and uh, will he start with the first 10 in game number two? Well, he certainly <laughs> was wired in game number one. We should mention also that David Ozio, who qualified third in this tournament, is another one of Richard Altman's horses. He's in his stable of bowlers, the uh, Magnificent Seven, as they are being called. Ooh, you got what we call the little overreaction there. He didn't throw any practice shots. The speed was just a little bit softer. He got the ball wide and it hooked quickly. 3-6-10. For his last two shots on lane 27, he's gotten seven both times. And Leto's match play record, 15-9. and nine. Saved his big one for uh, what it really counted, didn't he? Sure he did, 287. That's normally plenty good enough to win. Normally. And then Leto, who's had a history in the past of missing spares on television, converts this tough spare. First good look at 34-year-old uh, David Ozio out of Viner, Texas. He's had a bit of a rough spell in the last 12 months. Working on his timing all the time. David works on his timing. Breaks out the 2-4-5. He'll say, all right, I'll take that shot. Wasn't his ace. Didn't get the lift off the fingers that he was looking for. Has a, a beautiful swing when he does get into, into his timing. It really is a streaky type of a player. When he gets it going, he can be one of the best players on the tour. Oh, he can throw strikes forever when he gets it going. Well, they had to put that graphic up there, didn't they? Well, it wasn't a, my request, I'll have you know. Thanks, guys, in the truck. <laughs> and uh, there's Lisa. And if I don't say hello to Heather and Haley, two of David Ozio's biggest fans, his two daughters, uh, I would be in a world of trouble. Okay. You shot 153 in that game? Yeah. Started with a double, too. No, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> you did. Yeah. That's enough. We won't talk anymore about it. But I will mention the fact that Durbin also beat Ozio for the title, too. At another time. Same thing. Back this time on the left-hand lane. How 
about it for Ben Wiggles back and forth, but it doesn't quite fall. Much better shot. Got that ball well over the foul line. Got more lift off the fingers. <coughs> See that ball, how far he got it on the lane? About 18 inches. Ball snapped right at the end. Left that four pin. Switches balls, goes to a plastic ball, so he throws straight at those spares. Converts it. And Blood of Monticelli, 5'8", 150 pounds, in tip-top shape. As uh, he chooses to re-rack on lane 28. And we should explain to our viewers at home that each of the bowlers is allowed three re-racks a game, and that's it. They can't even ask for a fourth. So our tournament director, Harry Golden, has lost all of his air time. Back on track, flush in the pocket on the right-hand lane. And Leto thus far this year uh, has earned a little better than 67,000, as I mentioned, and uh, in his career now, $380,741. And uh, really has a long, long way to go. Only uh, 26 years of age, his seventh year as a professional. 26 already. <laughs> Only bowled in the World Open in Chicago when he was 16. Of the armor suddenly 27 has become the lane to conquer the 210 on lane 27. Left 3610 last time. This is the adjustment, gives it more room. Ball doesn't make it back, it's out in the zone that doesn't want to hook. Comes in behind the head pin, barely hits the head pin. 210. He's got to hit this two pin on the left end and thin enough to slide it over into the 10. Sometimes you hit it so thin it goes around the 10. Hit a two flush, and he's open. First open of the evening. So Ozio gets exactly what he was looking for, you know, a little chink in the armor. All right, let's talk about that. When I chatted with David before the telecast this evening, he said, Denny, I'm going to try and go a little more direct. I'm going to let the crankers swing it a little bit. If they strike, that's fine, but I think they might leave some two eight tens this evening. He said that as he carries that light scrambler is he's counting on the oil carrying down the lane and the lane getting actually in the, in the mid telecast getting a little bit tighter and not want to, wanting to finish as much it's amazing how you can think that far ahead though and uh, take the other players into consideration of course he's a tremendous match play bowler and david's a planner all the way through he he plans everything out for the double. Almost left the 2-8-10 himself, or actually the 2 7 10. And he's trying to conquer lane 27 with speed. He just threw that one harder and tried to jam it in there and didn't get the clean release that he's looking for and that he's capable of, of doing. So a spare up for Ozio in the fourth. He now leads by 11, and we're in the second game of the $150,000 Hammer Open at Boulevard Bowl. difference between beer and Genesee cream ale. Smooth Genesee cream ale. It's not the same old Brewski. Hey, you want to go to the beach this weekend or shop for a new car? I know the beach is fun, but right now your Buick dealer has up to $1,050 in special savings on 88 Regal. Buick Regal is affordably sticker price, and now that you can save up to $1,050 on a specially equipped Regal, it's worth giving up the beach for. But if you want to waste your weekend surrounded by half-naked men and women, we're open during the week, too. Buick, the right car, the right price, right now. One wrong move, and it could be over. The hottest women bowlers test their accuracy as they try to stop player of the year Betty Morris on the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. 
Mondays at midnight Eastern on ESPN. And uh, peeking over on Little Monticelli's shoulder there, uh, Mr. Johnny Wonders, the president of Fatball Enterprises. There's a good look at Handsome John. That Fatball is the maker of the hammer bowling ball, which just so happens to be the bowling ball that M. Little Monticelli is throwing. And Leto now up in the fourth and uh, trails by 11 at his first open frame. And Mike, uh, do you think there might have been a letdown after the big first game? I think that can happen, Dan. And I can remember way back in 1967, I made the finals of the Tournament of Champions. And Jack Beale a little bowl 300 against Les Schistler, and then I went out to bowling. You know, and he only shot 180 something at me. He still won, but. <laughs> oh, excellent shot there on the right hand leg. Did you ever shoot more than 190 on television? No, I don't. She many Christmas. Boy, he looks like he's. Uh, Trying to get back into that same frame of mind that took him to the first 10 strikes in the he, opening game. He's going to make the right adjustment on this lane 27. I really don't know what kind of an adjustment he's going to make. He left the 3-6-10 uh, and then the 2-10. And, and Leto in the championship round, now 16 victories and 21 losses, averaging a little better than 2-12. <laughs> Didn't know what it was going to do there, and neither did he. A little more direct on that shot, yeah. but uh, the result pretty good. One pin match right now. Ozio's got to start making better shots right now. Best shot of the match right there. Well, I think he is sensing at this point that Amleto's starting to get lined up again, and if he doesn't start to strike, he's going to be out to lunch. This is how David's capable of throwing the ball. The straight arm swing, long slide, very direct for David. He can hook a bowling ball, but he's going extremely direct. See how unbalanced he is right there? He's staying very calm. Now he wants the big double here. I think two in a row. Oh, his best shot on that lane. It leaves a solid 10. Ooh. Well, you could hear that strike all the way down to lane one. Looked absolutely perfect, and... Uh, there you see, uh, earlier in the week, David was some success over Amleto. He's in trouble now, though. So I miss a couple of 10 pins this week. Not this time, though. Next in line, the right-hander from Tampa, Florida, Tom Crichton on top of the field this week. Del Warren out of Lake Worth, Florida. So a pair of Floridians waiting in the wings. And then Leto, who has uh, seven consecutive strikes on this right-hand lane, he hasn't missed it yet. A la Pete McCordick in Tucson. Correct. 17 in a row for Mr. McCordick there. Correct the Mundo. What a memory, right? Leto uncorks it on the right-hand lane and the ringing 10 one more time. And uh, whew, we've seen some flush hits here tonight. And you can hear that sigh of relief coming from David Ozio. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the match. Uh, I thought that was the wind sweeping down the plane. <laughs> yeah. We've been singing that all week. We've got to learn the words then. One well, of these times, yeah, one of these days, Mike and I will do a rendition of Oklahoma. And uh, hopefully you'll all turn the uh, sound down on your television sets. Been a, just a terrific week here in Edmond, Oklahoma. Also at this point, want to thank Brett Goodyear, who is the uh, head pro at Oak Tree Country Club, uh, for all the hospitality. Uh, set up a, just a great golf tournament for the professionals here on Friday. A big cookout. Everybody had all sorts of fun. Made all sorts of bogeys. Uh oh. Way out the window that time. The 1 2 10. Looked like just a lapse in concentration that time, Dan. He left that 10 pin here. He went over to the lane. Watch how far to the right he throws this ball. He gets it out about the six board and no chance of making it back from there. to hit the head pin on the left and send it over to the 10. 
straight. Misses them both. Ozio is in the lead, sitting on the bench. Well, it's two opens on lane 27 for Amleto Monticelli, but uh, David Ozio shakes his head. Don't know why. He leads by 17. It's time to visit one of the world's great garden spots. The lawn and garden department at your local True Value hardware store, where you'll find the Nelson Rain Shot Trigger Nozzle for just $5.88. And the Weed Eater Electric Trimmer with Extra Line for only $24.99. For trees and shrubs, get the Ross Root Feeder for just $14.97. And get rid of bugs indoors and out with Decon Home Pest Killer, only $5.99. At participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. There's a level of performance that separates the good from the great. That's why Carmen Salvino designed the Ebonite Thunderbolt. The exclusive power core increases gyroscopic action for a sharper hook on heavy oil. And the Thunderbolt rolls farther before hooking, so it hits harder for less deflection and more striking power. The difference between good and great is the power of the Thunderbolt. Look at that bowler on the left. Looks like Marshall Holman when he strikes. Uh, oh, well, $27,000 on top this week, 14 for second. Not a bad page. Hey, this is the, the biggest paying tournament of the summer, then. Ozio by 17, trying to set up and a little bit. And oh my, nice sweep shot on the right hand lane. Interesting bowlers. Ozio is struck in the third, fifth, and seventh on lane 28 as he just makes a perfect shot here, right over about the seventh board. Ball finishing flush in the one three pockets. And he has not had a strike on lane 27 that he picked to finish on. Ooh, that was a little uh, grimace. Uh, huh? Take that tight shot. Jeez. Starting to get a little serious down in the trenches. He's got a double right now. Put this match away. And he does. Well, he liked it as soon as he let it go, and so did Lisa. Nice double. Way out of the lane. Look at the loft. Heavy fingers. Watch the six pin. Second for the right. Snap the ten up. I'm going to tell you what. He's been working hard all week long. Look at that face. With a vengeance. <laughs> and Leto pulls the rope and another good shot on the right-hand lane. Uh, he's going to make a good shot on a lane he's had two opens on right now on lane 27 to have any chance in this match. He's still potential 212. Ozio going to the 209 clip. Biggest shot of the week right now for Amleto. The winner advances, loser collects $6,000. Of course, actually, the biggest shot might have been in the 11th frame last game. I mean, he could have won a little bit yeah. more money there. <laughs> Nothing like shooting 300. But it seems as if Amleto gets better and better on national television. He just lost lane 27 entirely. David Ozio's strategy seems to have worked. He's playing further right than the big hookball bowlers, and Amleto just never did get zeroed in on lane 27. One strike over there, and the rest of them trouble. 6, 7, 10. He's got to give this a shot to have any chance in this match at all. He's liable to go 280, 180. Or less. It is going to be less. Best possible score for Amleto, 178, and it's a 41-pin lead for Ozio, who appears to be ticketed for the semifinal game against Tom Kreitz. I need to take an investment in that ticket. Set that one a little short, and that presented a problem. Back-to-back 6-7-10s. -back As you said, he set it short, which means he didn't get it out on the lane, and it's left to boot. See, over about the ninth board, the last shot hit the 6 or 7. There's not that much room out there. Well, with a 41-pin lead, did he just simply relax? He's a fairly intense player as he's uh, not think, asking for I help think, from the bowling gods. He's looking at the scoreboard. I don't think he relaxed. I think he got careful. Do you? A little tentative, perhaps? Yeah. He played for two all the way there if you're looking at the score. Well, what about your philosophy, Mike? In a one-game match, do you play match play in your opponent, or do you play the lanes? Well, ultimately, 
you're, you're playing your opponent. It doesn't matter whether he shoots 150. All you have to do is shoot 151 to win. And Ozio looked at the score then, and he said, hey, I'm just going to get nine. And, and he's got 174 in the ninth. The best Dan Leto can get is 178. He's going to win. David uh, got on the left-hand lane and uh, thought about a re-rack, but it wasn't his first order of business, so he was turned down. Going to have to make the shot. Another bad shot left again. He's going to open the ninth and tenth, or possibly, and still win this game. <laughs> Looks up at the score, and uh, that can't do anything for your confidence because the best Ham Leto could shoot if he struck out would be 178, and uh, Ozio right now has 182, so this one's over. There's the monitors up above, the score that David's looking at. Well, what started off to be a very high-scoring match has turned into a low-scoring affair, but Ozio advances as he converts to baby split. With Ozio, the whole thing is his confidence. You know, it's just magic. He wanted to make this, if for no other reason, than to get a practice shot so that he can, can uh, get that release squared away. He's just not getting out of that ball clean like he's capable of doing. Much better then. A shred of the rack on the left-hand lane. Amleto finishes up. Well, uh, an interesting week, nonetheless, for Amleto Monticelli, who came very close, indeed, to uh, collecting an extra $25,000 from True Value Hardware. And he winds up taking home $6,000. Amleto making uh, the telecast just a couple of weeks ago. So he finishes up, and uh, we'll be heading off to match number three. But before we get there, a very special feature on last year's champion of the Hammer Open, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. When it comes to pitching, you can never be satisfied with your performance. You have to feel you can do even better, to be the best there is. And when it comes to sports weeklies, the best there is for my money is the sporting news with more baseball coverage than you'll find anywhere else. Exclusive features, photos, updates, and inside stories, plus thousands of stats, box scores, and authoritative baseball facts in every issue. The sporting news, the most baseball for your money, and now it's yours at a terrific 75% savings. Call 1-800-638-1200 and get 55 big issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of just $750. you will save 75% off the cover price, save 50% off the regular subscription rate. So call now, 1-800-638-1200. That's 1-800-638-1200. And there's a bit of a break in the action here at Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma. The opening match, Amleto Monticelli thrilling the fans here in uh, the state of Oklahoma as he started with the first 10 strikes and everybody on the edge of their chairs and then left the 2-4-5 and shot a brilliant 287 to 247 over Mark Roth, but then Amleto losing in game number two to David Ozio, 194 to 175. But this is the third hammer open here at Boulevard Bowl. The first two were captured by old Deadeye, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Along with being a four-time world champion horseshoe pitcher, Walter Ray Williams Jr. has dominated the Hammer Open on the PBA Summer Tour. Walter Ray joined the PBA circuit part-time in 1980 and full-time in 83, and he's been a prominent force ever since. That's going to be enough. He has it, 237. He's won his third title of the year and is the leading money winner. Up until this year's tournament, Old Deadeye occupied only one position at the end of this event. First place here at Boulevard Bowl. I liked it the second time. It was much easier on my nerves. Right. It's not as fun for the fans, but the bowler likes it a lot better. Boy. Great shot and just tremendous bowling. Mike Alby quickly up off the bench to handshake. Walter Ray Williams Jr. captures the $150,000 hammer open for the second year in a row. I think he likes it. Well, part of it might be the house characteristics, the way the pins fall. They seem to fall well for my uh, particular ball roll and everything. I mean, that's what you need. You need to get the pins to be able to fall down. Um, the shot they put up the last couple of years has been pretty nice. I've been able to hit it. It looks like this year it's going to be pretty nice again, so if I can just uh, stay in there, I should be able to do pretty well. Confidence is evident in Williams' game, but he's far from overconfident. 
I try not to do that too much because you start thinking too positive like that, you get a little too cocky and then uh, you just forget about everything and, and don't really go out there and do what you need to do. Over the last five years, since becoming a touring pro, Walter Ray Williams Jr. has averaged winning over $90,000 a year and has collected five national titles. Well, unfortunately, the streak stopped at two for Walter Ray, but uh, the player that's on top of the pack this week, uh, we'll be back to chat with Mike Durbin in just a moment or so. Del Warren. Savages? Nah. Guys with irritated skin from shaving. Try new Aqua Velva Skin Conditioning Aftershave. Hey, it's creamy. Guys prefer its soothing formula. And fragrance. There's something about new Aqua Velva Skin Conditioning Aftershave. Introducing Minivac, the amazing miniature cleaning system designed to take on hundreds of chores no ordinary tools can handle. Minivac cleans away dust from camera lenses, computer keyboards, figurines, or stereo equipment. Minivac's powerful motor vacuums away dust and dirt. It comes with two wand attachments, two ultra-soft brush nozzles, and a reusable vacuum bag. Keep one in the car for cleaning along the dash, steering column, stereo, ashtrays, and seats. Minivac is perfect for removing dust and debris from pictures, models, and those impossible-to-reach crevices. In this special television offer, you get Minivac with all five attachments, plus convenient storage case for only $19.95. Here's how to order. Credit card and COD customers call toll-free 1-800-544-1000 or save COD fees by sending $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Minivac, P.O. Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut or call 1-800-544-1000. A sport for all seasons, and 12 months a year, ESPN brings you the best of the PGA Tour. Coverage from three of golf's Grand Slam events, including the final leg of the PGA Championship. Join the world's greatest golfers for heart-stopping and heart-breaking thrills at the PGA Championship. Live Thursday and Friday, August 11th and 12th on ESPN. One wrong move and it could be over. The hottest women bowlers test their accuracy as they try to stop Player of the Year Betty Morris on the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. Mondays at midnight Eastern on ESPN. Mike Durbin back at Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma. I keep saying Ohio all week long, but we're in Oklahoma. And with me is the tournament leader, Del Warren. Del, this week um, you bowled so well all week long, but I've noticed that even though you're 6'4", you stand about two feet in front of the 12-foot line. Why does a tall guy like you take such a short approach? Well, a couple of years ago, I worked with my coach, John Jowdy, and uh, my timing was so inconsistent by standing all the way back that uh, he thought because my arms and my legs were so long that by moving up and compacting everything that I'd be a much more consistent player. I've noticed you've added something else a little bit different, that right now you're raising the heel of your right foot. Why did you do that? Well, uh, my first step was really inconsistent. So all I, I, all I did with my approach was I made it into a three and a half step approach. And that seemed to make it even more consistent because I had a tendency to cross the first step over. Well, you keep going. You might be down to two or one pretty quick, huh? Yeah, I've, I've tried three, but uh, that didn't work out too well. You haven't had uh, the greatest year this year. This is only the third time in the top 24. You've made about $28,000, but you've won twice before. What's the difference this week? What turned it around this week? Well, a lot of things. Um, I worked really hard with John for the last three weeks, uh, and I went between Austin and here, I went to Beaumont for three days with uh, and worked with Mark Williams on equipment, and uh, he gave me some tips, and I just stuck by him this week just to see what would happen, and everything turned out great. One last question. This is the first time that you've had to bowl from a title coming from the number one position. Have you got any special strategy to combat that? I'm just going to go out there and be aggressive. Uh, it's only 10 frames. Uh, no guesswork. Just get out there and hit the pocket. Well, you're ready. I'm ready. He says he's ready to do it, Denny. We'll see in just a couple of games. Back to you. Well, it wouldn't surprise me because Del Warren knows how to win, but before we the championship game, they have to decide the semifinal between Ozio and Christ. We'll be right back. It's another boring car commercial. Wait, honey. This one's for the Continental Auto Group. What's so special about them? Well, look. 
Now until August 1st, it's the Continental Auto Group Summer Savings Sale. We can save up to $2,000 on America's best selection of import and domestic cars and trucks. Plus get lifetime service, free towing, and free state inspection. Wait, here comes what? their number. 1-800-365-5200. Too bad I missed the rest of their commercial. Next time, don't talk so much. Are you sure the boat will be there? We'll be there! Let's go! They're getting closer! Can I be of some assistance to you boys? Looks like you boys could use a mariner. When you have to depend on an outboard, get a mariner. They're better in the long run. Available at Roach Sales and Service in Columbia. As anyone who reads the Wall Street Journal can tell you, it takes money to make money. Specifically, it takes 47 cents a day. Call 800-372-3000 for this great journal subscription offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. ESPN heats up your summer in and out of the water with hot Tuesday nights. Each week, pro surfers take you on a ride you'll never forget. Professional water skiers scorch the surface with treacherous jumps. Then hit the beach for a potpourri of red hot fun. Hot Tuesday nights sizzle each week at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Ooh, it's hot. Kreitz and Ozio, a pair of very talented right-handers. Uh, still to come, Del Warren. Semi-final game, $150,000 hammer open. And Ozio, who has the reputation of practicing more than anybody on the PBA Tour, zipped over in between games to practice a little bit and leaves the dinner bucket right out of the gate. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. You've just bowled a game on the championship pair. You have a little feel for the pair. Now you run over to a practice pair. It's got to be different. But see, he doesn't have the feel, then. I mean... He knows somewhat what to do, but right now he's just not making the shots he knows he's capable of. It's not the pair, it's his game. Had some success earlier this week. Over his opponent right now, stands up straight, carries the dinner bucket, and runs it out. <laughs> you know you're in trouble when you do that. David, a very hyper player, uses the plastic ball, throws straight at the two pin and hopes for the best and got the best. First offering for the strapping right-hander from Tampa, Florida, who won just three weeks ago on ESPN. Wacko, and he went through four players to do so and shot 276 against Branham in the title match in the Seattle Open. And it's interesting, that's not the ball he was using in practice. He was using a much shinier ball in practice than that. Started in the number four spot to win that Seattle tournament, defeated Amleto Monticelli, Dave Husted, Randy Peterson, and of course, George Branham III. Let's see if he has the trouble with lane 27 that Monticelli had. It's been the tighter of the two lanes. They're the most troublesome. Well, he's not having trouble with anything, is he? Crunch, crunch. For Christ. Ozio better uh, get his game squared away in a hurry here. David won his first title back in 1985 at Dick Weber's Lane from St. Louis. Better shot, but just a little left. It left the four pin. Didn't get the break and trip it out of there. Right now, I think David better off, actually, in getting a spare here and going to his tough lane. If he can get a strike on 27, 28 seems to be the better of the two lanes for him. And he's going to get to finish in that lane this game. Kreitz doesn't have him buried before the 10th break. He bowled superbly last night in the final eight games of match play, winning six of eight and averaging 244.5 in the process. Had some big, big games, 270s, 260. Shot a 300 game this week. I think it was the first, second round. Sound like the railroad train's coming by. 
that ball nicked the finger hole, his middle finger. He has a tendency for that track to roll up over the middle finger when he doesn't get out of the ball real clean. Hit about the ninth board, and it just bounced a little bit right here. It still blows the five to smithereens. Well, if you're hitting the finger hole, the ball doesn't grab as well as it normally would, does it? No, didn't think so. A little more spin, huh? Kreitz trying to make it three straight, and this time it's the half ten. Yep. Where we saw Roth and Monticelli just snapping those things out with their power. Not that Kreitz doesn't have a lot of power. This ball he's got in his hand right now that he's going to use to shoot the 10 pin with. That's what he was practicing with for strikes earlier. More speed in the 10 pin. No trouble. Nice aggressive shot. He's just bowling with a lot of confidence like Pete McCordick. Classic four-step delivery. Pushes the ball and steps at the same time. Let's it go. It's into the swing. Down here now. Goes right to the top of the backswing in the third step. See how his third step is planted? Now watch the slide. Knees bent, arm out. That's how you're supposed to do it, Dennis. Boy, if you're gonna model a game, that one wouldn't be a bad one to start with. No, it's classic style. And he's hoping for a classic reaction on the left-hand lane, and he gets it on lane 27. So it's a 10-pin lead for Tom Kreitz, but uh, don't ever count David Ozio out of any match. We'll be right back after this. One way to find a job is to look in publications. Lots of publications. Any luck? Well, I've got newspapers, magazines, trade papers. Find anything yet? Newsletters, phone books, you name it. There's a better way to find a better job. Honey, look at this. The National Business Employment Weekly. It's published by the Wall Street Journal. It lists hundreds of high-paying jobs all across the country. Now, what about managerial jobs? Managerial, professional, technical sales like mine. It even has articles on interviewing, writing a better resume, and how to succeed once you get the job. What am I doing with all of these now that I have the National Business Employment Weekly? Pick up the National Business Employment Weekly at a newsstand or call 800-372-3000 and receive eight issues by first-class mail for only $35. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. Each and every Wednesday night on ESPN, the PBA Summer Tour. And coming up next week from Green Bay, Wisconsin, the Lamode Classic and the Molson Golden Bowling Challenge. And then one of the favorites of the senior players, the PBA Senior Touring Pro Doubles. Rowdy Morrill likes that tournament. He's the defending champion. And as we look on down the line, the $115,000 Ebonite Senior PBA Championship at Hall of Fame Lanes in Canton, Ohio. Yeah. Tita Sebez is looking at that one. And then another senior tournament. The Columbia 300 Senior Open in San Antonio, Texas. Yep, and John Jowdy uh, will be treating us nicely down there. But, boy, let's get back to live action with Dennis Baldwin. And, uh, Dennis, uh, very excited about uh, the tournament this week and uh, the fact that the professional has put on such a marvelous show. And speaking of great shots, that's what Ozio came up with. He's adjusted his line, Dan. He's moved just about three with the feet and two with the target, I think. Didn't Watch have much this. choice. Watch this. This ball goes almost right over the second arrow. Right over the second arrow. He's moved in a little bit. What a nice adjustment. Let's see if it works on lane 27. Even match. I found something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that treasure map out, and uh, he's been on a voyage as a blink. Watch him. Very animated player when he gets it going. Yeah. Right. Ooh. A little pirouette there from Mr. Ozio. And a word to boot. I don't think he was thanking that left hand leg. He just said, all right. That's all he said. Kreitz trying to double up and uh, even up the match. Oh, in the old pocket 7-10. Where, in most of these shots, the head pin goes in front of the 7 and the 5 pin goes behind the 7. Let's see if it happens here. Watch the head pin. It goes in front. And the 5 went in front. Both. Both of them went in front. 
You throw hard as a temp in and hope something good happens. Kind of a helpless feeling to throw that good of a shot and end up with uh, nine outs. His career stats on television, nine wins, three losses with an average of 216.45. That's a terrific one-loss record. Although uh, he finds himself now trailing by uh, 22. Amazing how it can turn around so quickly in the sport of bowling. Yeah, you start posting those donuts, you got all sorts of problems. Especially when the other guy's got uh, the X's in the tit tat toe. Mm -hmm. Trying to get back on track, so that was short, and right through the nose, and got a bit of a break. It just lapse of concentration because of the 710, the frame before. Didn't try and fit that shot, did he? Or? He just wasn't thinking. He's still thinking about the bad break he got the time before. That's got to be the hardest thing in the world to do. Uh, when something like that happens to you, to just shake it off and, and go to the next lane and make a, a great shot, especially when you know your opponent suddenly is wired. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Well, open, open. Ozio has the uh, something touch. He's got the luck of the Irish, even though he's not Irish, right? Boy, oh boy. Sometimes you have to work so hard to win, and other times they step up and say, here you go. says, I'll take it, thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amazing. He goes from being behind in the third frame by 10 pins, and now three frames later, he's 44 pins ahead, and in total command of this match. As he asks for uh, a re-rack on lane 27. There's a shot uh, from our vantage point. It uh, would appear as if it's a pretty good rack, but... Uh, the ESPN sweep will uh, start anew. Well, those pro eyes, they can see solid tens on good racks. You mean before the shot's even thrown? Yeah. I know, I can see him. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Pierce up there who likes to re-rack quite a bit is kind of smiling at that. Chuck uh, cashing this week and the hammer open. And right now, Ozio is in the process of uh, reeling in a little more cash for himself. If he can get to the title game, that might be worth 27000 but uh, it's much too soon to be talking about that. Stay tuned for the number to call for your free issue of Consumer Reports and your free gift. How smart a shopper are you when you're faced with all the different models, different features, and different prices? Almost too many choices. These speakers are detachable. And what about salespeople? I get confusing opinions. Now, get the answer before you go shopping in Consumer Reports. Call now for your free issue of Consumer Reports. Then decide. When our bill arrives, pay it and get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $18. Or write, cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. If you do subscribe, you'll get the Medicine Show and the 1988 Buying Guide issue, all with your paid subscription, and all for just $18. Consumer Reports will make you a smarter shopper, too. Call toll-free 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. ESPN lets the good times roll as America's top bowlers try to strike it rich. Hall of Famer Mark Roth leads the field at the Lamode Open Wednesday night at 9.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. Tom Kreitz on the right-hand lane, and uh, time is running out. <laughs> He's already in the thing, if you can do it with a pencil, you can do it with a bowling ball, and he can strike out for 225, and he better do it. That's one of them. Well, he's a very professional shot maker. He's just going to go up and take it one at a time and see what he can do. Kreitz winning his first PBA title, the PBA National Championship. And there's a replay of the last shot right between the second and third arrow. Nice turn on the ball. Finishes solid in the 1-3 pocket. All 10 in the pit. And he's thinking, where was that two frames ago? Yeah, when he left the 7-10. Right. Yeah, if he strikes there, that's a double. Matches even right there. That's right. Yep. Boy, what a bad break that was. 
Well, can't worry about that now. Got to get back to live action. Try and strike. And once again, we have a problem. This time it's the 6-7, but this at least is makeable. <laughs> Looking for the positive and everything. Huh? Everything <laughs> optimist. The hey, speed. OCO going with, the, with the, uh, the firm speed versus Kreitz, who's soft, and Monticelli, who's not as soft as Kreitz, but softer than Ozio. And he's not having that problem on lane 27. No, he sure isn't. And uh, Tom Kreitz in the middle of a nightmare, and uh, he's not yet asleep. Probably wishes he were. Ozio trying to uh, clamp things a touch, and he does with a uh, drill city shot on the right-hand lane. Right now, he's just so wired in that he's, he's saying to himself, he knows this match is won. He's just saying, hey, I, I, I've got to keep my rhythm going, everything going for the next match. He's thinking about the champion. Notice the small first step here, which he's been working on. Now look at the extended push away. Puts it out on that table we were talking about. See how straight that arm is right there? Free swing from the shoulder right there. Look at the head, how steady it is. Shoulder high. Now watch the slide. And that's the result. Solid strike. Well, right now, Ozio is uh, hammering the championship pair, 27 and 28. Seven bagger, and uh, he is in uh, route to shooting a big, big game here. 279 if he takes this one off the sheet. Kreitz bowling for posterity at this stage. A little swisher, and uh, when they don't fall, no matter how good you throw it, that's what happens. And it's amazing how the sport goes. Mark Ross steps up there and bowls 247 and loses by 40 pins. <laughs> yeah. And Ozio gets up here, and they, and Lotto shoots 175, and Kreitz is going at a 173 pace. They're shooting 350 at him for two, and he's going to win both matches soft. Tom Kreitz going to cost an extra $8,000 for a third-place finish this week. And... Uh, got to be frustrating his last appearance on ESPN he could do no wrong en route to winning four matches and the Seattle Open but tonight it's been uh, the other side of the coin well it's been two things Kreitz left the 710 in the fifth frame but Ozio made the adjustment in the fourth and fifth frame moved in that little bit and he's been just flush in the pocket ever since yeah, he hasn't made a mistake uh, since the third started striking in the third <laughs> Other than uh, the shot that he uh, doubled in the in the second with, uh, never really done much on the left hand lane. No, and he picked a finish over there. It's amazing. Del Warren has picked a finish over there too. We'll see if he changes his strategy. Although Ozio seems to have both lanes under control right now. It's amazing. We had such enthusiasm the first match and such excitement in the last two matches. It kind of uh, the crowd is. Not really up into it. And of course, mm -hmm. when you don't have close matches, that's what happens. Well, when Amleto shot the 287, it was his highest game of the week, which was terrific. But now Tom Kreitz with a uh, 171 has posted his lowest tally of the Hammer Open. Ozio now on the seven bagger and. Uh, Right now, I guess he's just probably trying to keep the same rhythm, and Del Warren standing off to the right, watching Ozio throwing nothing but strikes. I wonder what's going through his mind. Well, same thing is going through Ozio's mind when he's watching that Leto throw nothing but strikes. Yeah, uh-oh. Do I really have to bowl that guy? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, as we mentioned, uh, David Ozio, one of the seven players that uh, is sponsored by our host here, Richard Altman, the man with the golden touch. And of course, uh, before the uh, telecast started today, Richard Altman was saying that Ozio was going to be the winner. <laughs> <laughs> I know one thing, if Richard has any stock tips, I think I'm going to jot them down before I head to South Bend. Cross lane spare. Oh, going to pick it off at the last possible moment. Smiles for Dave Houston and also for Tom Kreitz, who congratulates David's 268. So it's a big victory over Tom Kreitz. And now it's on to the championship game. But before that, an update on the bowling news. It's time to visit one of the world's great garden spots. 
the lawn and garden department at your local True Value hardware store. Where you'll find Ortho Triox, just 1088 a gallon. It prevents plant growth for up to a year. To clear heavy grass, get the Home Light Dual Line Gas Trimmer with a 25cc engine, only $79.88. Then control bugs with a Floatron 15-watt electric insect killer, only $24.88. At participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. The great furniture cover-up. When polishing can't solve problems, you have to cover those ugly white rings, or maybe the whole dull table. But instead of covering your furniture... Rescue it with Formby's Furniture Facelift. Facelift is a breakthrough, a complete kit for a perfect shine. And the three easy steps took me under an hour without stripping. So pick up some facelift and end the great furniture cover-up. When polishing won't help, a furniture facelift will. From Homer Formby. Welcome back to Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma, for this week's version of the Bowling News. Each and every year for the past 50 seasons, the Bowler's Journal magazine has selected All-America teams. Some familiar faces dot the starting lineups here in 88. However, there are a number of talented favorites who were bumped from the number one position. One of the brightest young stars on the LPBT tour, Leanne Barrett, is making her first ever appearance on the number one team, while Tish Johnson out of Downey, California, a multiple winner this past year, has also earned a berth in the upper echelon. Easily the comeback player of the year, Betty Morris returned to top form this past season and is once again a first team member, while the most consistent player over the past 12 months, Lori Nichols, has successfully made the team for a record ninth year. And without question, Lisa Wagner has dominated women's bowling, having captured five titles, including the U.S. Open, and she has been chosen to the All-America team for a record seventh consecutive year, and this year, of course, she is captain. The honors continue to pour in for Marshall Holman. Marshall has already collected PBA and BWAA plaudits, and now he qualifies for the first team for the ninth time. And for the first time in his seven-year pro career, talented Amleto Monticelli has made the jump to the coveted first team. Amleto, representing the foreign contingent, captured his first two titles this past year. And what first team would be complete without the presence of the PBA's all-time leading money winner? Now in his 18th year, Mark Roth is still a threat to win each and every time he shoes it up. The lone holdover on the men's squad, Walter Ray Williams Jr. is having another outstanding year. And if old Deadeye continues to nail down top seat positions, he'll more than likely return in living color to the BJ's All-America first team once again next year. And last but not least, making his first ever appearance on the first team is Brian Voss. Voss, easily the most consistent player on the PBA Tour over the past 12 months, was awarded the highest honor of the first team, that of the captain. And it must be tougher and tougher each and every year to choose these teams because two six-figure winners, Pete Weber and Mark Williams, were both, well, they both missed the first team this past year. Tough uh, for Jim Dressel and company to keep selecting these All-America teams. And now checking out the PBA Regional Tour and updating you on the latest regional results all over the country at this point. Bob Learn Jr. out of Erie, Pennsylvania beat the best in two regions over in Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, out west, Mel Ackerman topped right-hander Rick Jones to collect $2,000 in first-place prize money. Down south, Curtis Odom continues to dominate. Curtis is now finished in the winner's circle for the third time this season. And, of course, out west in San Jose, California, David Rosal and Todd Thompson finished 1-2, banking $2,500 and $1,500, respectively. In the highest-scoring National Junior Bowling Championships held this past week in St. Louis, nearly $45,000 in college scholarship money was awarded. The first-place finisher in each division received a $5,000 scholarship, while those who ended up second were given $3,000. Third place collected $2,000 in scholarship funding, and, of course, fourth place was worth $1,000. Ron Kaler and Randy Johnson both rolled 300 games, and Rob Causer tossed an outstanding 8-10 three-game series and each received an additional $300 in scholarship funding. Baseball has the San Diego Chicken, and of course, uh, the Phillies have the Philly Fanatic. But now, bowling has itself a national mascot, and his nickname is Bullregard. Bullregard was the result of a Name That Alley Cat contest, which was sponsored by the National Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum. And thanks to Sandy Hutton out of Frederick, Maryland, who came up with the top name. 
There are any number of ways of uh, lining up on the approach and taking four or five steps and throwing a strike on the PBA Tour. But for those of you at home, here's a new high-tech approach that maybe even Mark Roth couldn't master. And I don't think Mike Durbin has designed this game, but this is Robbie the Mechanical Man, and he appears all over the country, not just in bowling centers, but uh, in grand openings. And boy, check out this style. A little choppy there, I think. And Wait a minute, he's, he's got a problem. Richard Alton, the proprietor, I think he's got a problem with the battery. Pa Wait a minute, Richard, he's going the wrong way. Better help him out a little bit here. He's going to end up back in the audience. All right, that looks a little better. Marty Westerman. Oh, wait a second. Well, he gave us the okay, Mike Durbin. I don't know if he's struck or not, but uh, do you think that you might be able to do something with his game? I, I was afraid you were going to say that he looked like my game. I mean... <laughs> and, of course, here's a recap of what's transpired thus far. Amleto Monticelli exploded in the opening game here at uh, Boulevard Bowl, shooting 287. He had the first 10, and then it was the 245. And then after that, everything seemed to die down. All the energy seemed to go out of our entire telecast. Ozio just outlasted Monticelli, 194 to 175. And then the Wizard of Oz. Well, Ozio really coming on strong, made the big adjustment that you talked about and uh, captured game number three. He's in the title match. And I talked to him, and he said that that adjustment was very simply moved two boards left with his feet and two boards with his target, and suddenly strikes started coming. Which is a great example, because many times the people who watch the telecast, I, I think they figure that the pros stand pretty much in the same spot and throw at the same area and really they don't well a lot of people have the idea denny that every bowling lane is the same it's 60 feet long it's so in many inches wide it has seven arrows out there we all play them all the same but they're all different you have to make those adjustments and you have to make them in the middle of championship matches sometimes to win the big bucks all right so while we're chatting right now del warren is throwing his practice shots on the championship pair and uh, what's going through his mind Right now, I think what's going through Dell's mind is, is how do I make that kind of an adjustment on this pair because he was not striking in practice. But Dell Warren all week long seemed to be on the verge of losing it, and then he would turn around and shoot a game, big game the next game, so we'll just have to wait and see what he does. You've mentioned uh, that uh, Dell is a bit of a hyper personality. He's always trying to relax himself and calm down. A very deliberate player, but he, he does that because he wants to try and relax and he wants to key himself down. He said, if I got excited in the first three or four frames, I'd be running the 100-yard dash. Well, I know. I, w I can identify with that because I was the same type of players. I had to keep my emotions under control. Once I found it, like David has found it, and then maybe if I were in the championship match, I'd show a little emotion and start running some strikes out. All right, let's talk uh, strategy now. Del Warren coming on. Does he force Ozio to start or finish on any particular lane? I think Del Warren's strategy has to be whatever lane he likes the best, he finishes there. And right beforehand, he was going to finish on lane 27. He has the option of changing that right up to the last minute. We'll have to wait and see which lane he chooses to finish on. All right, he's now bowling from the top seat position for the first time in his career. You talked with him. Uh, what do you think his chances are? Uh, I don't like his chances right now. <laughs> if I had any money on this, I'd take it on Ozio right now. Do you now. think so? Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Well, we'll have to wait and see. That championship match is coming up in just a moment or so. The winner picks up $27,000 here at Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma. There you see it. David Ozio trying to climb the ladder. And trying to say, no, 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 this hammer open is mine. Osborne from Osborne Boat Sales in York, your local Mercruiser powered Regal dealer, inviting you to see the highest quality of runabouts and cruisers on the market today the Merck Cruiser powered Regals. We have them all, big or small, from the 18-foot medallion to the 36-foot Commodore. If you're going to purchase a boat this year, purchase quality, purchase Regal, and preserve your dollar investment. Come see them at Osborne Boat Sales at the Mount Zion exit of Route 30 in York. You've been part of the fun. Now be part of the Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company team. We have immediate employment opportunities with the Hotel Hershey, Hershey Lodge and Convention Center, Hershey Park, and our many other divisions. Hershey Entertainment and Resort Company has numerous positions available for people of all ages. Now hiring for part-time and seasonal openings. For additional information, call 534-3131 or stop by our employment office at 300 Park Boulevard in Hershey. What can you expect when you invest at Schwab? Ask a Schwab customer. My experience is Schwab people are professional and helpful. But what's most important is they're not out to sell you something you don't want or need. When I want to buy a particular stock and the market's closed, I simply pick up the phone and call Schwab. And yes, they're there. 
24 hours a day. A few years back, I found I had some money to invest. I'd had some prior experience with a full commission broker, but now i learned enough to make my own investment decisions. It's easy to do business at Schwab. They're efficient, accurate, and very courteous. For a free booklet, what a discount broker can do for you, call toll-free 800-247-3500. That's 800-247-3500. Call Schwab now. Well, they've been putting their hands together all week. Applauding the professionals. Now we're down to the final two. David Ozio and Del Warren. Ozio averaging 231 for the past two games. More importantly, though, his opponents have averaged only 173. Makes it easier to win. And right out of the gate, 8-10. All I got to do is pick them, Dan, and then... <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> and they're in trouble. Oh, my goodness. That ball looked like he got it a touch inside and got into the oil a little bit early, but it uh, obviously didn't hit very hard. Uh, going for one, trying to bounce it around. Didn't happen. Ball just deflects here. Watch it bounce to the right. Five goes in front of the eight, and the six lays in front of the ten. And that's not a good scenario. Del Warren, who's perhaps maybe the most deliberate player on tour. Earlier this week, he told uh, Tom Kinsler of the Daily Oklahoman, uh, hey, I know I'm slow, but uh, you got to love it. Hi. Breaks the split down, leaves just a 6-10. Kind of uh, chatting with himself as he comes back off the I was, I was thinking the same thing there as he kind of mumbling along here. <laughs> Bill's been doing that all week long. He took some time off earlier to, to work on his physical game and his mental game. Match play record this week, 17 wins and 7 losses, the best of the television finalists. <laughs> Says that on purpose, by the way, the ball hitting the thumb hole, wants to throw it as straight at the spares as he can. And he hit that part thing perfectly to chop it and still didn't because the ball was just backing into it. I'll tell you one thing, his heart skipped a beat. Almost took the six right off the ten. Up by 11 pins. High again, breaks up two tremendous breaks right through the heart of the pins twice in a row and leave only the six ten both times. That plays heavy with your mind of your opponent, too. They're thinking, I saw it in the pocket, got a split, and he hits the nose twice and gets no splits. Mm -hmm. Earlier this week on lanes 11 and 12, and uh, the fifth round of match play, Bill Warren authored a perfect game, and I watched it, and every shot was flush in the pocket. He'd love to have at least a couple of those right now. <laughs> Sounds awful, but gets the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's uh, Ozio, who's a uh, member of the weekly Bible study out here, has his faith tested right now, he has to try and come back. Oh, he's a solid customer, this guy. Well, we see who the crowd is definitely rooting for here. Know who she's rooting for, too. I suppose that's a good luck thing, to grab the earring like that. I know one thing. He keeps striking. She's going to have a sore earlobe by the time it's all over. <laughs> you got seven in a row the last game. I mean, Ray, was it? <laughs> Today's a row. She still has the earring on. Will he trust it? He did, but still didn't knock over the 10. Oh, he's uh, really trying to grind it out. Very emotional player. He won that double so bad. Right over the second arrow, ball just not biting quite enough. Watch the six lay down in front of the ten. That's what's known as a soft ten. He's saying, ready to slap the hands. Drills the ten pin. See if Warren now can make an adjustment here and get the ball in the one three. 
Notice how much difference in the speed between the two players. Warren just throws the ball much softer than Ozio. He's going to have to speed it up because the speed on his first two shots was not good. Lanes are hooking a little more, I think, than they did throughout the week. And 6'4", uh, he's standing in front of the 12-foot line. And watch him raise the heel on his right foot. And he still gets a little waggle in there before he starts. Looks like the starter block. Give this one a little more room, and he does. And an excellent shot on the right-hand lane. And uh, Bill trying to remain calm and cool as uh, he takes a nine-pin lead. Won his first PBA championship back in 1986. And, of course, teamed up with Joe Furpo to capture the uh, doubles classic in Las Vegas last year. But needs a victory tonight to get back into the Firestone Tournament of Champions, as does David Ozio. Correct. Both of them do. A little more room once again. Comes screaming back in a solid double, and that's as much emotion as we've seen from Del Warren all week long. So he's been saving it up for the title match. Now leads by 19. He's on the double, and so now the onus is back on Mr. Ozio to come back. CBS Video Library proudly presents the collector's edition of Star Trek. One of the best-loved television series ever made. The Menagerie, the only two-part, two-hour Star Trek episode, is your introduction to this classic collection. I present myself to you for arrest. The charge is mutiny, Doctor. You may return the Menagerie for a refund or keep it forever for just $4.95 plus shipping and handling. You'll receive future collector's edition cassettes, one about every six weeks, with two complete Star Trek episodes on each cassette to preview risk-free. Keep only the cassettes you want with two complete Star Trek episodes on each cassette for only $24.95 plus shipping and handling. No minimum to buy. Cancel at any time. To begin your Star Trek collection with the Menagerie, have your credit card ready and call now. sport for all seasons and 12 months a year ESPN brings you the best of the PGA Tour coverage from three of golf's Grand Slam events including the final leg of the PGA Championship join the world's greatest golfers for heart-stopping and heart-breaking thrills at the PGA Championship live Thursday and Friday August 11th and 12th on ESPN and we're live at Boulevard Bowl in Edmond, Oklahoma, but Eric Crossover <coughs> Clemens and John Soften Saunders are standing by in Bristol with uh, all the updates on ESPN Sports Center. David's got to get it going right now. Oh, boy. All four balls in the pocket, one strike. And it it's amazing how it goes that way. He couldn't do anything but strike the last game, and now suddenly he can't get a strike. Watch the two pin fly right over the 4 7. <laughs> Boy, that pin fly in a hurry. Didn't take long to get there. So Ozio has to settle for the cross lane spare. He trails by 21 as Warren changes seats, and we'll take a look at the right hand lane. The winner receives 27,000. And the loser will take home 14. But again, the win, the victory, the trip to Akron, just so important for both players. They both know it. It's been a while since both have been in the championship round. First appearance for both players this year in 1988. Has to hurry. Oh, the 10 pin again. One for five. Six pin. Took a look at the 10. Did you want you to yeah, peek out there? Peeked at it, tried to smack at it, and yeah. missed it. With that little love tap. Must have been a spat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> David shakes his head, realizing eh, it was pretty close. Tickled the 10, but it wouldn't drop. You watch your seats to pick it up. Boy, it's out of his hands right now. Warren steps up, throws two more strikes. Ozio's in big trouble. And he knows it. Del Warren. 
six foot four inches tall, 185 pounds. Uh, last year winning a little more than 50,000. Thus far this year at 28, he'll almost double his earnings if he wins here this evening. That deep breath right now, boy. It's just he knows how important these next two frames are. If he can make two good shots here, he can, he can just almost put this match away early. the soft 10. Ozio's still alive. Well, the 8-pin had a notion to stand there as well. Well, when you get nervous like that and the swing comes down, you just don't have the weight on the fingers that you're looking for. Almost a year to the day since he last won. See that foot up. Boom, boom. You tell him he's trying to double bounce it too? No, I'm not telling you he's trying to double bounce, but we've seen Amleto do that. We saw Sam Macaron and Riverside do that. Well, this has been a marvelous week here, the $150,000 hammer open, but uh, Richard Altman and his crew will be shifting into high gear. They'll be hosting the Seagram's Cooler BPAA US Open half a million dollar tournament uh, here in 1989, $100,000 the top prize, and Richard's already told me. They're looking to get 2,400 plus pro-am entries in that one. If at all nice shot on the left-hand lane. Lane 27 is uh, Warren serves notice that this one's far from over. See what David can do here. 21 down. Waving at it now doesn't do any good. It's got to get the double. Got to get the double. Personally, if it were me, I'd be calm on this shot on the right lane, even no matter what kind of strike I got, and show the emotion the next time for the double. Talking Texan to it right now. Out of Vider, Texas. He's angry. That's two for six. Adding 333 is good in baseball, but not in bowling. Trying to get that ever crucial double. He's got to have it to tighten things up. Does he get the hit? Oh, yes, he does on lane 27. His best shot of the game right here. Gave us a little room. Heavy fingers. Look at the turn. And the six got that 10 that time. Just flicked out the 10. And Ozio is only looking at the 10 pin. And when it falls, that's his reaction. Well, I sure hope he doesn't run out of approach here. Big shot for Del Warren right here. Big two frames coming up for him. Oh, he couldn't have thrown it any better. Oh, when it came back out, got it. Well, the late fall of the 10, and uh, Ozio's nerves are shattered with that shot, and Del Warren gets new life. I missed it. I had looked away. I thought he'd already left it. Solid 10. The, hit the double kiss on the ball. Yep. And the neck of the pin hit the 10 and it fell. Boy, that uh, the old phrase of destiny. There's the disappointment and there's the excitement. For Ozio to come back from that, it's just almost a superhuman accomplishment if he could do it. Warren leads by 21 and uh, could make things very interesting, as you mentioned, for Ozio if he strikes here. What a break and trying to take advantage of it. 2-5 doesn't take advantage of it. Watch him pull that blue ball out now and bounce it down there to make the 2-5 here. If it were me, I wouldn't want to be shooting at this. Too many things could go wrong. He's just going to throw hard and straight at that two pin. <laughs> a little hop, skip, and a prayer that time by Del Warren, who says, safe. Well, a pair of doubles and a couple of uh, very close chop efforts. Right. He almost chopped it, but 
He's got the right strategy. If it hadn't had one more rumble, it big shot now for Rosa. They're all big right now. He's down 19. Can knock it down to nine with a strike here. Will it carry? Yes. His life was on her feet. Well, the chanting starts here at Boulevard Bowl as Ozio now works on the three-bagger. He's running it out to his left. Lisa's on her feet standing up. And it almost crept high. Watch the two-pin barely get the four. Biggest shot of the week right now for David Ozio, the ninth round. Can take the lead for the first time in the match. Let's see you do it now. Well, Ozio's got himself set for the 10th frame. See, Ozio is in a position now that no matter what Warren does, if he strikes out, he can't hurt. And that's all you ever ask for in the PBA Tour. The early turn on that one likes the reaction. <laughs> Warren comes storming back. So we got a one pin match headed for the 10th frame, and uh, we bowled all week long. 160 players in the tournament. It comes down to who can perform in the 10th frame as he makes an excellent shot here. Good lift and turn. Snaps that 10 pin out. Heavy roll. Well, even though Ozio could strike out to win, I kind of believe I'd rather be Warren right now and put the pressure on him here by striking out. Here we see the difference. Could be a tie, Dan. We could have a tie. Any number of things can happen. Warren down by one can take the lead with this strike. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, these guys are responding to the pressure, aren't they? Well, that was Flush City all the way. I know we're close to Oklahoma City, but that's as good a shot as you can throw with all the heat on. Kept his rhythm. Nice turn right over the target. The ball finished perfect in the 1-3, and 10 of them went into that pit. He's just wondering, is it going to carry? Yes. That puts him up by 9. One more, 19. Straighter this time, needs the reaction, and he closed out the five, and right now, Warren is beside himself. Watch it come down. Comes in light. The ball gets the five. It sends it over. The pins get the seven. And Warren loves it. Looks like the Warren waltz to me. I don't know what you call it. It may be a victory dance, though. Up by 19. Counts important. Counts very important. He strikes. He shoots 235 and forces Ozio to strike out to beat him. By a pin. He knows it. Everything in his power to capture the hammer open. Now it's up to that man, David Ozio, to try and change the course of history. Warren finished with eight strikes. If Ozio would strike out, he would finish with eight strikes. We'll see what will happen. Ozio has to take him one at a time, but he must get the first one here.
Has to hurry. Oh, perfect. Oh, oh and a prayer right now from Del Warren. This is what it's all about on the PBA and Tour. And look at Del Warren. He's in a prayerful mode. This Ozio just makes a classic shot here. Oh, just perfect. Well, when you see those pins start turning around, you know you've rolled it well. And when you see him turn around, uh, you know the reactions are good. But now you got to slow down just a little bit and try and relax as uh, Lisa's thoughts are with him right now. But she can't help him much. She can't throw it. This is the big one right here because he puts him in position. couple of extra minutes we may have a tie what happened here he had the 10 pin standing comes in light six pin slides over the ball the pin hit the ball again that's twice it came back out to get the 10 well what's fair for one is fair for another and Ozio pleading with this one to drop and he knows that's the sweet strike in the 11th and if he strikes here he's twenty seven thousand dollars richer this match they might as well not tune in anymore because it doesn't get any better than this on the pro bowlers tour well we'll be back to chat with mr rosio the wizard of oz and ask him about that trip to the emerald city here in edmond oklahoma what burns calories faster than jogging what's better than cycling what's the number one fitness exercise in the world it's cross-country skiing now, there's a cross-country skiing simulator that firms and tones the entire body and puts total fitness in easy reach of everyone. It's called Easy Glider, and it's the first ski simulator that's easy to afford. Just 20 minutes every other day. An hour a week is all it takes to strengthen and firm all major muscle groups and lose weight aerobically. Step on the glider pads. Set the tension control for desired resistance, and you're off on a road to fitness as invigorating as a cross-country run. With Easy Glider, you can burn up to 360 calories per workout, and you'll feel great. Your reward is total fitness, improved endurance and energy, weight loss, superior toning of chest, arms and back, calves, thighs, and buttocks. The smooth, fluid gliding action means there's none of jogging shocks or injuries. And unlike exercise bikes or jogging, all major muscles get an efficient workout. Notice the quality construction of the sturdy metal frame. This handsome unit folds down quickly for easy storage. Other ski simulators give your wallet a workout because they cost as much as $500. But Easy Glider is just $59.95. And your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. Finally, the benefits of cross-country skiing are in easy reach with Easy Glider. Grab the bargain. Call toll-free now. To order your Easy Glider, call 1-800-862-3100. That's 1-800-862-3100. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $59.95 plus $9 shipping and handling to Easy Glider, Department 20, Canton, Ohio, 44750. That's the Easy Glider, Department 20, Canton, Ohio, 44750. But for faster service, call 1-800-862-3100. Right now, we're looking at Del Warren as he's going to make his last delivery of the game where he's striking out to shoot 235, forcing David Ozio to get three strikes in the 10th. Again, it was just like the other ones, a perfect shot into the 1-3 pocket. Del Warren and his reaction to pressure, I mean, uh, he threw the last four, a great break in the ninth, and three terrific shots in the 
the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. Now, normally, that's good enough to win a PBA championship. 25, of course, 27,000 on top. And, and then, of course, uh, Ozio on the other side of the coin, though, now realized that he needed uh, the final three strikes to win by just one pin. Well, I've been in that situation, and all you can do when you're in that situation is you take them one at a time. Is that what you did, David? I tell you, I, I'm speechless at the moment. <laughs> uh, to take three shots like that, I just took them one at a time. Uh, just keyed on keeping the speed up and, you know, and keeping good, you know, looking at what I was throwing, you know, throwing a target. I didn't want to do nothing but just keep the speed up and just hope for the best after that. The 11th frame, it appeared you'd left the 10 pin. You must have had a range of emotions from disappointment to elation when it came out of the pit to get it. Well, I always thought that the tour is the toughest thing in the world to bowl on because you can run through a whole gamut of emotions in a matter of 10 minutes. I think I'd sped through that in a matter of five seconds. I bet you did. <laughs> All right, let's take a look back now at uh, the shot that clinched the championship. What was going through your mind? I just wanted to keep the speed up, keep my eyes on my target, and just stay good and straight through the shot and just uh, hold it on line. And uh, thank God that's what I did. Yeah, that one's picture perfect. They all went down. Obviously, a, a big, big thrill for you and Del Warren's world just kind of crashed when that happened. Oh, Del bowled a great game. Uh, Del's... Del. Well, I know that uh, your emotions have run the gamut right now, and we're going to bring out a gentleman, uh, Mr. Earl Widman, uh, the chairman of the board of uh, Fab All Industries, uh, with uh, a gorgeous trophy for you and a presentation. They have a Fab, they have a fab Ball, a home and a hammer, David. It was the most, pre most precious shooting I ever saw in a long time. I couldn't have taken one more. <laughs> I know Richard couldn't have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in all honesty, uh, I have to give all the credit and thanks and praise to God for this. Uh, I don't think any human being can stand up to that to throw shots like that without a little help, and I got it today, folks. I got it. And I'd like to thank uh, Fab Ball people for making this possible. Uh, it's a super tournament they put on here, and uh, Richard Altman, uh, the greatest promoter in the world. I tell you what, this is the height of bowling on, on tour. Uh, I don't think there's ever going to be a time that'll ever match this, and uh, the crowd here being you know, behind me, I tell you, this is a moment to be remembered. All right, now obviously, the man that you're looking at right now is uh, your sponsor as well. And uh, Richard, what more can you say? The kid brought home the wheat. Well, you can't say anything, Denny. Just uh, unbelievable to throw three shots like that in the 10th frame. And uh, I'm just tickled to death for Dave. It's been a little dry spell. And uh, I've got something for him here to make it worth a check for 27000 $27,000, Richard. Not bad for a night's work. Mm. Big Bob, you think I ought to give it to him? <laughs> of course, David's referring to Bob Benoit, who shot 300 earlier this year on national television and won $100,000, of which uh, a portion of that went to Mr. Altman. Uh, I, yes, uh, Richard's been my sponsor for five years, and I'll tell you what, whenever I was at the lowest time and, and didn't know whether I wanted to bowl anymore, he gave me a shot, and I'll tell you what, that was a valuable shot, because it gave me time to, to get back up on top of my game, and uh, uh, good old Captain John Jowdy pulls me through all the time, so, uh, you know, we got our people that looks out for us out here, and uh, I'm very thankful for it. All right, uh, Mike, I know you've got Del Warren standing next to you. Might we uh, ask the top seed to come over, and uh, why don't you step in here and uh, chat with Mike for just a moment. Uh, Del, sometimes it just doesn't happen. I don't think you could have bowled much better. Well, I'm real happy with my performance. Uh, you know, you, you got 10 frames, and anything can happen. But um, I got up in the 10th, and all I just wanted to do was uh, execute, and I did. And David did the same. Uh, it was an exciting match, and uh, I'll have to try it again next week. Michael, any questions? How did you, uh, what were you thinking of in that 10th frame? When you finished with the three strikes, did you figure that you would won, or were you afraid that he would be able to get the three to beat you? I figured he would, I figured he would hit the pocket solid all three times, whether or not he was going to carry, you know, I didn't know that, but I knew he was going to make three good shots. He's been bowling well all week. Uh, he bowled well tonight on television. He had the lanes figured out, and uh, my luck wasn't my way. That's all. All right, and uh, we know Richard Altman gets a portion of this check, and obviously David Ozio and, and his lovely wife Lisa is probably going to end up with something. And Lisa, uh, that was very exciting out there. It was. It's always exciting to watch David bowl, but I just want to thank everybody here also on behalf of the wives. They've done a lot for us, and it's just a wonderful stop to come to. We'd love to chat with Heather, but, uh, geez, I don't know what she'd say about Dad's victory. Maybe we'll find out next week. So long, everybody. From Edmond, Oklahoma, as David Ozio captures the $150,000 Hammer Open.
championship round finals of the $150,000 Hammer Open have been brought to you by True Value Hardware. For quality, selection, and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. By Frigidaire, who brings you a full line of quality home appliances. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a light. Next week, the PBA Summer Tour returns to Red Carpet Lanes in Green Bay, Wisconsin for the championship round finals of the $125,000 Lamode Open, beginning at 9.30 Eastern Time on ESPN.